apart from Ken, they all seem to be doing okay? According to the headmaster, he's been pretty accurate in the past. Yeah. Well, school reports aren't everything. Just this one of Ken's isn't the best, is it? I'll have a word with him. Somehow, though, I don't think he's the academic type. Okay. Anything else while you're here? Yeah, well, there is, actually. I was talking to Sergeant Steiner earlier this morning. Apparently, they picked up this kid late last night. Wants to know if we'll take him. He's got to be joking. We're cramming him in like sardines already. Yeah, well, I told him that, but uh, he seemed pretty keen, though. Apparently, this kid's on his own. No family that they can trace, nowhere to go. Steiner reckons he's decent enough. Yeah, every kid's a decent one, according to Jim Steiner. Yeah, well, uh... I mean, he'd rather he came out here, otherwise it's off the tower map with the roughnecks. Yeah, look, Danny, I don't want that either, but we just haven't got the capacity to take any more kids. I mean, every cottage is full. Most have more than they can handle as it is. I know, but I Besides just... that, we haven't got the budget for any more kids. We've already overspent this year. I'm on the phone half the day assuring tradespeople that we'll pay their bills. The council's about to raise the lease. Okay. We've got to draw the line somewhere. OK, OK, I'm just passing on a message. Anyway, Steiner will be here himself later, so you can tell him personally. OK, come in. What time's that? Yeah. About 10.30. G'day, Kirsty. What can we do for you? G'day, Mr. Manda. Just come to ask Danny what time we're going. Right now. That's all day. Sure, thanks, Danny. I'll catch up with you later. How's that brother of yours, Kirsty? Have you heard from him lately? That's where we're going. I thought we might cruise around the stable, see if we can pick up a few tips. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, if you're here and you let me know, we could do some winning bets around here. <laughs> OK, see you later. Nearly finished it. Just another five minutes. Sure. We got plenty of time. G'day. Well, when did you get here? A couple of days ago. We've been looking for you everywhere. What? You just got here, stupid. I wondered where this got to. What else in mind did you nick? Get off, will ya? Quite a mansion you got here. No danger of throwing any big parties. Yeah, it's all I need. Anyway, you don't have time to sit around here admiring the furniture. No, oh, I bet you not. So, how's it all going then? Oh, it's great. They work you like a dog. Up at four, sweeping and mucking, exercising the horses, cleaning the horses, feeding the horses. You don't stop. It's good, though. First time your life you ever got out of bed before lunch. Oh, you should talk. People OK? Yeah, great. Well, there's a couple of stairs, but most of them are pretty good. Got any horses of your own to look after? Yeah, sure. Come with us or I'll drop this saddle off and I'll show you. Great. Got here all together. About 30 in training. That's a lot, isn't it? That's only half of them. The boy's got at least that many spelling out in his farm. Hey, I'll leave it here for you, Johnny. Doesn't look like there's 30 to me. Yeah, well, it's Saturday, isn't it? What's that got to do with it? Well, it's race day. Half of them are out there running, you galah. Oh, don't you get to go out and watch? Nah, only when one of my horses is there. Speaking of which. Well, what do you reckon? He's great. What's he called? First Commander. He's the best. Or he's gonna be if he keeps up the way he's going. He's had three wins already. Small stuff so far, but he's entered into a city race in a couple of weeks. Then we'll show him, won't we, mate? You two on first name terms, are you? Two right. Hey, watch this. I'm teaching you something. Come on, boy. Take the carrot. Come on. Come on. You did it before. Come on. Why don't you try some sugar, like Grandpa used to? He was doing it fine before. Come on. Maybe it's the audience. Maybe he doesn't like performing in front of us. Hmm. I don't know what it is. He's been a bit bored with everything the last couple of days. Hey, Mike. Got that saddle for Johnny? G'day, Mr. Maguire. Yeah, I told him it's ready. 
Now, Mr. McGuire, Denny Harrison from Westmere. I uh, met you a couple of months back when uh, Michael's came out here. Sure, I remember. Is it okay if I show my sister around? It'll only take a few minutes. All right. Then you better get down to the garage. Dave's had a problem with one of the floats. He'll need a hand. No worries. I uh, hope we're not interfering. I realize you're pretty busy this morning, but I just wanted to have a quick word about Mike. See how he was, well, fitting in. Oh, he settled in pretty well. Of course, he's got a lot to learn, but uh, he's got away with horses. No one's complained about him so far. He certainly looks happy enough. Oh, well, as long as he does the job and minds his manners, that's all I ask of him. I feel, excuse me, Mr. Harrison, this place is like a circus on Saturdays. Sure, Mr. McGuire. Hey, and uh, thanks again for taking him on the way you did. Like I said, as long as he toes the line, that's all I ask. Hey, Smitty! What do you think you're doing? It's not a bloody draft horse. Look, uh, I've got to go. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's pretty short notice, but I had no alternative. There was just nowhere else. I know, I know. Look, you don't need to explain. I'd have done exactly the same. The point is, I just don't think we can take him. Why not? You've always taken him in the past. Mm. Surely one more kid won't matter. Yeah, I know, but it's always just one more kid, though. Besides, it's not just a question of numbers. What do you mean? Well, money is what I mean. Dollars and cents. You see, the screws are really on places like this at the moment. The government's cut back at subsidy. We can't get any money out of private institutions. The charity committee's already overcommitted. Unless we find some quick solution, places like this are really going to be up against the wall. I had no idea things were that bad. Yeah, well, that's only half the story. So what do I do with young Steve? I don't want to send him to Taramat. Look, I tell you what. He can stay here for the moment. But then I'll, uh, I'll have to look around the other welfare places and see if we can set him into one of those. It better be really great if you can manage it, Dave. OK. Well, when can we see him around here? He's here already. I'll get him. Steve. This young fellow goes by the name of Stephen Crawford. Steve, this is Mr. Mann of the director of Westmere. How are you, Steve? Well, I'll leave you to it then. OK, Sergeant. Thanks a lot. My pleasure. See you, Steve. OK, Steve. Take a seat. Well, let's find out all about you. Thanks for helping us with that axle. <laughs> I've been there all day. No worries. Of course, I'll expect a few good tips in return. Oh, yeah, you bet. Hey, listen, uh, First Commander's running on the 21st. Should be worth at least an each way chance. First Commander on the 21st. That I'll try and remember. And uh, if you want to see some of the track gallops, just give us a ring and I'll arrange it. Great. Kirsty, you know what you're doing at 5 o'clock in the morning? 5 o'clock? Mike, I think you've just lost the fan. And keep writing, you lazy clod. Yeah, yeah. See ya. <laughs> Then after I pinched the stuff, a couple of guys from the store grabbed me and held me till the cops got there. Oh, so that's when you met up with Sergeant Steiner? Yeah. Oh. He was real good. Helped me with the magistrate and everything. Yeah, well, he seems to have a pretty good opinion of you. OK, well, I'll take you over to where you'll be staying. I'll explain about the place on the way. Come on. Oh, have you got any uh, belongings? What? You know, your stuff. You got a bag or something? What for? Haven't got nothing to put in it. <laughs> OK. We'll organise some stuff for you from the store after you've seen the others. Come on. Sister came to see you this morning. Yeah, Kirsty. Oh, was that guy your father? No, I haven't got a father. Haven't you? No. Well, who was he then? 
Uh, I don't know. I suppose you'd call him a friend. You don't talk much about yourself, do you? Nothing to say, really. You've been here a month. I don't know a thing about you. I don't know anything about you, either. You never asked. I don't like questions. Aren't you interested in other people? Not really. I prefer horses. You should see the room he's got. Chuck with all these saddles and stuff. This has been our stable. Stable? Better stinks of horse manure. Please, boys, that's a lot better than Mike. Listen, Ken, you might at least wash all of each plate. It's not going to break your arm doing it, that is. Is it much money? Betty earns heaps of dog. Probably flogged it all at the races. He doesn't go to the races except to work. Oh, get out. All those guys who work with horses bet on the races. Me old man told me. Your old man? What would he know? He's been in jail for donkey shit. He years. still knows all about that stuff, guys. OK, you lot, put a sock on it. We're trying to listen to the football. Excuse me, can I come in for a moment? Or I disturb this highly organised work pattern you've got going. Don't speak too loudly. It's already taken us three years to get into this. Uh, listen, can I talk to you and Denny and Ethan? Uh, everybody, this is Steve Crawford. Steve, this is Kirsty. She'll introduce you, OK? Right. One of these days, I'm going to get to listen to a whole match. I wouldn't bet on it. Listen, that boy I was talking about this morning. The one Steiner was on about? Yeah, that's him in there. I've decided to take him. Well, for the moment, anyway, until I can find somewhere else for him. I told Denny you would. Yeah, the point is I'm going to have to lumber you with him. Oh, come on, Dave. We're full up as it is. Well, there's that bed out in the veranda that Mike used to sleep on. Yeah, but we can't use that. The health department warned us. That's one of the reasons why we had to get rid of Mike. I'm sorry, Denny. There's nowhere else. Well, you're the boss, but I mean, if it was... Look, if it's any consolation to you, things are going to get a lot worse around here before they get any better. Come on, then. You better make the formal introductions. Oh, gosh, they got you working. <laughs> Steve, this is uh, Denny and Maggie. Yes, I was talking about them. They're cottage parents. Cottage parents? That's right, Kirsty. Steve's coming to stay with us. When did you find this place? A couple of days ago. I was taking the horse for an exercise walk and we stumbled onto it. Lucky you. Old Maguire would never find you down here. We can have a nice loaf. <laughs> it's not that. It's the horse that likes it. Picks away, has a bit of a drink from the river. Reckons he's in clover. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad, all right. One of the guys was telling me he used to live in a welfare home before he came to Maguire's. Yeah? So what? Nothing, nothing. I was just interested, that's all. It must have been pretty rough, eh? Nah, it wasn't so bad. Got on your nerves a bit sometimes. No privacy, no time to think. Be on your own. Were they strict? You know, lots of rules and stuff. Nah, not too much. It was the little things that got you down. Same sort of food all the time. Only three minutes in the shower because the hot water had to go around. That sort of stuff. So how'd you end up here? The home organised it. They try and fix up jobs for the kids when they're ready to leave school. I wanted to work with horses, so they got me in here. Reckon you're last? Too right. It's what I always wanted. Why? I don't know. Why gets me down sometimes. Worse than a slave driver. He lays into you too, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. Sometimes. But he's OK. At least you're getting paid for it. Oh, come on. We'd better get back. You been in a home before? No. Nah. Where you been living then? Some of us with me dad and me mum. He's been with me brother for the last couple of years. What happened to him? He went shearing up north. What, he just walked out and left you? Not exactly. I was supposed to be going to my sister's. Why didn't you? She didn't want me. Oh. Irene? Are you in here, Irene? No, of course I'm here. When aren't I here? If I'm not here, who else is going to sort out the mess you lot get the place into, eh? Irene, we've got a new customer for you. Oh, have you just? Who's this then? Steve Crawford. Steve, this is Irene. She's not as bad as she looks, though. <laughs> Enough from you, my girl. All right, then. Oh, I suppose you'll be wanting some school gear, will you? Hey? School uniform. We all get them. I mean, you are going to school, aren't you? Yes, yeah, suppose so. Well, of course he is. Oh, look, there's no hurry for it now. Come back in the morning and I'll fit you then. I've got to go and get ready, otherwise I'll miss my lift to bingo. And he also needs some other stuff. Clothes and things. Yeah, Denny gave me a list. Oh, all right. We'll fix that in the morning, too. We also came for our food box. Oh, didn't you get it this morning? We couldn't. We were on day duties and Kirsty was up with Denny, seeing her brother. Oh, 
And how's Mike getting on out there? I bet he finds that's lovely with all those horses. Too right. He's having a ball. It's just in a room he's got. And he has this great looking horse to look after. Oh. Well, say hello from me next time you see him, will you? Yeah. Listen, Irene, who buys this stuff? We've been eating the same food for weeks now. Can't you get something different for once? Look, you just be grateful for what you get, Lassie. At yeah. least you're getting fed, aren't you? Yeah, well, it's enough to put a person off eating, that's all I can say. Well, all I can say is you lot had better clear off. Otherwise, I'll have your hides if I miss that first game. Go on, out you go. Quick! There you are, mate. Eat yourself silly. Where do you want him, love? Oh, just here for now. Right, you heard. Don't stand around. There's plenty more outside waiting oh, for you. Yeah. I wouldn't waste your energy moaning. Not unless you want to be dubbed in for more work in the morning. Oh, really? This is too much. I don't believe in spoiling the kids, but it's about time they got some variation in their diet. The way this place is running, we're lucky to be able to feed the little beggars at all. What? None of the supermarkets around here will give us credit anymore. How long's this been going on? Oh, a month or more. That's why we've been on this sort of stuff for the past few weeks. Manda struck up a deal with some wholesaler who gives us cheap rates. It's the only joint around our supplies. But why? Oh, I know we're not rich, but we've always paid our bills before. Well, get on with it. Yeah. I don't know the full story, but you don't have to be Einstein to know we're short of money. We can't fix a roof on the workshop, the cars can't be serviced, there's no repairs on breakages. The way I see it, we're lucky we've still got jobs. But surely they're doing something about it, I mean. Man has organised a meeting of the Westmere Council tomorrow night. My guess is he's going to lay it on the line. Mm, the council, they never believe anyone. Well, they might this time, love. The meeting's taking place in the hall. How will that help? The heating's broken down. The silly cows will be so cold they'll probably agree to anything in order to get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> too bad, is it? Don't know. Too soon to tell. Oh, it's good here. Not many rat bags. Maggie and Denny are great. Are you allowed to call them that? What? Their first name to me. Of course. They're like friends. Do you get locked in at night? No. This isn't a prison. So you can walk out any time you like? Well, if you leave without permission, you're absconding. They pick you up pretty quick. What happens then? All your privileges are cancelled. No trips or movies or anything. Do many kids take off? Most of us have got nowhere to go. Yeah, I know the feeling. bridle I lent you yesterday, I need it for the morning. Oh, yeah, it's under there. Oh, thanks. Listen, do you ever have any of your horses go off their food? Sometimes. Not often, not while they're in training. Why? I just looked in on First Commander. He hasn't touched his feed bucket. I tried to get him to take somebody he didn't want to know about. Oh, have you told Mr Maguire? <laughs> nah, he's out for the night. They had a big win today. Don't know when he'll be home. Yeah, I heard. Lucky dogs. Anyway, I wouldn't worry about it yet. Just see how it goes in his track yard tomorrow. Yeah. I'd watch out for Maguire, though. Why? Well, if he's been out celebrating, he'll be in a real mood at five o'clock in the morning. Can we go watch TV now? Yes, but keep the volume down, please. My turn to choose the program. Well, get off. You picked that lousy movie last week. It's Cal's turn. I oh, know. Where's the TV guy? Steve. Steve. Come on, give the quiet person William. Sure. You know, I think Dave might be right about him. He's quite a nice kid. Hey, easy. It's early days yet. Listen, I've got to pop over to the office, but I shouldn't be long. What for? Since when does office work crop up on a Saturday night? Since Dave decided this afternoon. He wants to see me and Jerry, something about some meeting he's cooking up at the Westmere Council. There's nothing wrong, is there? I don't know. Hope not. He seems a bit agitated lately, but uh, can't blame him. Running this place to get anybody down. <laughs> shouldn't be long.
Not thinking of shooting through already, eh? Nah, nothing like that. Well, that's good. The others would kill me if I made them shift all that stuff off the back veranda for nothing. Look, I'm sorry we got to put you out there. I know it's rough, but, well, it's got its compensation. You don't have to put up with Kenny snoring. I don't mind. It's fine. Sure? I've never lived with a family before. Never had a house or anything. Not where I belonged. Yeah, well. Hey, why don't you get in there and join the battle for the TV set? Sure. Yeah. Come in. Hi, Danny. Thanks for coming. How you going, Jerry? How are you, Den? So, what's the problem? Well, it's not just one problem, it's a whole mess of problems. Like what, for instance? Like we're overcrowded, for a start. On top of that, we're running desperately short of money. Buildings are running down, we can't buy new equipment. If things break down, we can't afford to fix them. We can't even afford to buy decent food anymore. I've noticed. If I have to eat any more of those canned beans, I'll throw them. <laughs> yeah, we won't be alone. Anyway, it seems that the illustrious group that governs this institution, the Westmere Council, just doesn't seem to realise how bad things have become. I must be blind as well as deaf, then. Yeah, well, I was talking to Mrs Bunbury earlier this evening. She the one on that uh, charity committee, didn't she? Yeah, she's on the council, too. You see, I thought the problem was that we just didn't have the funds. Well, Mrs Bunbury told me that there is money available, it's just that the council won't release it. You're what? Yeah, well, apparently some people on the council, and one in particular, aren't happy about the way we're running this institution. Well, the way I'm running it, to be precise. What's there be? Oh, you know, the usual gripes. We give the kids too much freedom, there should be stricter rules, harsher punishments, etc., etc. What the hell would they know? They hardly come near the place except for their bloody monthly meetings. <laughs> Precisely. Anyway, they seem to have got into their head that by uh, holding back on the funds, we'll be forced to cut back on the luxuries, as they call it. Luxuries? What luxuries? Oh, you know, excursions, work experience programs, sporting gear, just about everything that stops this place from becoming a prison. You're insane. Anyway, I, uh, I've called an emergency council meeting for tomorrow night. I'd like you two to be there, just in case I need some opinions other than my own. So what are you going to tell them? Well, I'm going to tell them that this place is becoming totally unworkable. That unless we get enough funds, well, Westmere will be in danger of closing down. And what if they don't come across? I, for one, will pack up and leave. Join us for the next episode of Home tomorrow night at 6. And in a few moments, part one of Planet of Fire in Doctor Who.